and welcome to the Word of Truth, the Sunday School Class of the Air with your teacher, Rod Payne. The Word of Truth. Happy Thanksgiving. I don't know when you're watching this program, but the program is intended to be aired around the time of Thanksgiving. So if you're watching on the 24th or so of November, that's the weekend that this program is going to air. But it's going to air all the way up to the like the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So I'll probably say Happy Thanksgiving again on the first show in the month of December because that's intended to air on the first Sunday in December, which is very close to the Thursday of Thanksgiving. In any respect, Happy Thanksgiving. Let me be one of the first to welcome you to the Word of Truth. In fact, I'm the only person who's welcoming you to the Word of Truth. Thank you for joining us on this program. Let me also say once again, I hope you'll have a great Thanksgiving holiday. I hope you don't eat yourself into a stupor. I hope you practice some degree of moderation. And I hope that God has blessed you as he has our family with the opportunity to have something for Thanksgiving. Oh, there are so many people who do not around this globe, and even in this country. And so many people, as we're thanking God this holiday season, that have gone through tumultuous, horrific times along the eastern part of our United States to this time, the recovery will be many, many years. Just, just in the last, you know, little bit of time, you've heard about other weather events. So there are many people who are struggling to say thank you. If you've been blessed by God to have a roof over your head, to have food to eat, to have clothes to wear, please give thanks. Which shouldn't, shouldn't just be on one day in the year. We do this to commemorate the Thanksgiving as a part of our nation's historical past, or our nation's history. But as believers, we need to be practicing thankfulness all the time. I have what I call a gratitude list that I carry with me. Started a new one at the 1st of November. And I, re, I redo my gratitude list periodically. It generally starts with the same few first things. Thanks for God. Thanks for His Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Thank you for my wife, Vicki. Before Vicki, thank you for salvation through Christ. But generally, my children and my family and things of that nature follow. But then I change some of the things as we get further deeper into the list. But I try to practice gratitude because it's a part of a program that I've been practicing for many years, which helps me as a disciple of Christ to maintain my focus on him. So I hope that you have something for which to be thankful during this Thanksgiving season. I also want to say happy birthday to any of you who celebrate birthdays around this time and happy anniversary to any of you who are celebrating anniversaries around this time. If you've experienced loss at any time during this time of the year, I hope that you are a believer in Jesus Christ. And I pray that your loved one is as well. And I pray that you have one more thing to be thankful for, a great expectancy of a wonderful reunion that will await you and they and them when you're joined together in heaven. Now, before we get too far into my welcoming, I want to tell you we're going to be in chapter 27 as we conclude our study in the book of Acts. So if you have not already done so, if you have not already done so, please turn in your Bible to Acts chapter 27, because I was negligent and I did not do that. Reminding you where we are the last two times we were together. So I want to tell you, Acts 27. I also want to take this time to remind you, if you'd like to write to us, and by the way, it's not too early to start sending Christmas cards to all of your friends here at the Word of Truth. I'm just a face here on the, on the program. There's a floor director, and there's a director upstairs, and there's people that make sure it gets on the station and on the Internet. So we'd love to get Christmas cards. I can tell you that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm speaking for myself and the group of folks. If you'd like to, you can write to us at The Word of Truth, 1209th Street, Wichita Falls, Texas. The zip code is 76301. You can send your Christmas cards to that same address, The Word of Truth, 1209th Street, Wichita Falls, Texas. The zip code is 76301. If, on the other hand, you'd like to write to that same address and ask us to pray for you, or for someone for whom you care, or about a situation or a circumstance, we'd be honored to join you in lifting this petition up before the Heavenly Father. 
you'd like to call us, you may do so Monday through Thursday or Friday mornings at this number you see it on the screen, 940-723-2764. The number again is 940-723-2764. If we don't answer the phone, because again, this is a very busy time of the year for us. Most of the year is very busy for us, but especially in the missions department right now, getting everything ready. Uh, it's a very busy time. Of course, the month of December, just around the corner, depending on when you're watching the program, maybe it is the month of December, and the Lottie Moon Christmas offering is taken for missionaries around the world. Cans by the car has been collected and distributed and continues to be distributed. The angel tree uh, during this month in December, we give gifts to children of uh, children whose parents are incarcerated. A lot of things going on. So if we don't answer, when you ask for Rod Payne's office, when you call 940-723-2764, please leave a message. We will be faithful to return your call. Well, the story so far, Paul got into some trouble. He's a guest of the state again, if you will. And he's about to get whipped and tossed when he says, wait a minute, you would flog a Roman citizen? Whoa, this brings everything to a stop. Because citizens of Rome... That was uh, quite a privilege for someone to enjoy, first and foremost, and his lineage provides that. It was something that I uh, grant you could be obtained, uh, even if you weren't born a Gentile, a Roman. But nevertheless, Paul appeals, and he says it is the right of every Roman citizen to appeal to the top dog, to appeal to Caesar, to have his, if you will, case heard in Rome. Had Paul not appealed to Caesar, they probably would have just, you know, give him a thrashing and let him go. He's told, in fact, had you not appealed, you'd be on your way home this afternoon. But he appeals to Caesar. And with other prisoners, he's shackled and he's put aboard a ship. And that ship is guarded by a complement of folks, one in particular, who were charged with delivering these prisoners to Rome. And by the way, as it would appear as we read the narrative in today's lesson, or as we read around the lesson, if they're not going to get to Rome alive, they're to kill them. Okay? Which seems to me to be kind of contradictory. Okay? Just, just at first blush. Because he's going to Rome, because he's being allowed to appeal to Caesar, and that's what's keeping him from getting a thrashing. But they can kill him, or they can kill all the prisoners if they think they're going to escape. I, it has something to do with the charge of a guard and how you're not supposed to let your prisoners escape. Nevertheless, we find ourselves in chapter 27, verse 33. They're on a boat, and they encounter bad weather. And they're going to be running aground. And they're doing everything they can. And one of the things they're thinking about doing is abandoning the ship. And Paul says to him, under the auspices of God, by the way, when Paul's speaking, he's not saying, well, I got this idea that you probably shouldn't leave the ship. It's safer here. No, God's instructed him to tell everybody on the ship, you stay here. Okay, let's start with verse 33 in chapter 27. Just before dawn, they've all been going about two weeks without food in this just awful thing. They're, 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 they're trapped. They're in an attempt to escape from the ship. The sailors let down a lifeboat, but Paul says to the, this is up earlier in the chapter, unless these men stay with the ship, they can't be saved. So the soldiers cut their ropes and they let the lifeboat drift away. Now, by the way, uh, Paul's got to be speaking with tremendous amount of conviction because they're listening to what he has to say and he's a prisoner. Okay. When you have God with you and when God is directing your steps and what you're going to say, and remember we talked about this, when the word says, don't be worried about what you're going to say when they throw you into court because you're going to be given what to say by the Holy Spirit. Paul is speaking as a man who has a knowledge. He, he knows what he's saying and they're listening to him. They cut the lifeboat and they let it off into the sea. Paul says, verse 31, before we get to 33, to the centurion who was charged with guarding him and all the soldiers with him, unless these men stay with the ship, they can't be saved. 
So they cut the rope and they let the live boat fall away. Just before dawn, now here's where our quarterly begins. Paul urged them to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, you've been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Man, I can't, I can't do that. I've, I've fasted before. I've fasted for, I think, a week or something like that, but I don't think I could do two. Uh, with my glycemia and everything, I, I just know, I, I don't believe I could, but God can empower us to do anything should he desire it. But I, 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 wow, that's amazing. 14 days. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Now the word, your quarterly correctly points this out. I hope you do have one of our quarterlies. And if you don't, I hope you would ask us for one. Uh, we may have already sent them all out now for the next quarter. But if we haven't, you still can write to us at the address that I gave you earlier and that I will give you again for the conclusion of this program. We give these quarterlies away for free, and we don't send any solicitation for funds with the quarterlies. We just want you to be able to study God's Word. But your quarterly and your study materials correctly points out that this word survive means soteria. And it basically means salvation. You're not going to be saved. You're not going to be, you're not going to survive this incident if you don't stay with the ship. The old adage is people jump ship. They jump ship because they don't like the course that the ship is on, or they jump ship because they don't like the difficulties the ship is encountering, or they jump ship because they don't want to stay under the current regime or command for whatever reason. Folks sometimes jump ship. Body of Christ, there's another way you can look at this. God through his grace, through his mercy, is extending to everyone on board his provision for their security, for their survival. But they have to stay with the ship. They have to stay with the ship. Some of you watching this program today, especially during this time of the year when so many people are afflicted and just, just assaulted by depression. And I, listen, I totally get it. I totally get it. A large part, a great part of what you go through as you're fighting cancer can often be depression. So I, I, I get it. But I can't, you can't, we can't jump ship. The ship, our hope is built on a solid rock. On Christ the solid rock, I stand all other ground. It's sinking sand. I'm going to stay with the ship. None of you will lose a single hair from his head. Every time I bow my head to read the word of God, you can see that I've lost a lot of more than just a single hair. But I'm not going to lose my life because I'm going to live for eternity, because that's the promise of God's word. First Corinthians 15 says that we will not all die, but in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, we will be changed. I'm not going to die. I'm going to go straight from this life into the next, and I'm going to spend eternity in the very presence of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, you're not going to not lose a single head or a hair on your head. After he said this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all. Now, he wasn't celebrating the Lord's Supper. Okay, these are not believers. So he is not having communion with them. He's just thanking God for provision. And that's okay to do. He took some bread. He broke it and began to eat. And they were all encouraged and they ate some food. They followed his faithful example. Listen to me, body of Christ. They followed his faithful example. They had foregone food for these last 14 days because they honestly didn't know when they were going to get another bite to eat. And they were trying to, you know, preserve it as long as they could. Just like people in the desert, you know, trying to hold on to their water supply. Paul says, I have faith in God. And God has instructed me to share with you. It's okay to go ahead and eat what we have. Because he's going to provide. They follow his faithful example. Would that I live that kind of life out in front of others who know us, know me. Would that all of we as believers live that kind of life that says we're going to be faithful. We're going to trust God 
And we're going to live out our faith in front of others, and they're going to want to follow that faithful example. They all ate. They be, they, he broke it, and they began to eat. They were all encouraged, verse 36, and some ate some food themselves. And all together, there were 276 folks on board. That's, a not, that's not a small vessel. This was a good-sized ship. Okay, and you didn't have, uh, you know, a beautiful, uh, you know, uh, deck on which you could walk and you couldn't go down to the captain's dining table and uh, feast at a sumptuous repast. And you didn't have staterooms with private baths and great views of the ocean. Nah, this is not a luxury liner, but there's 276 of them on board. And God has said to every one of them, you stay with the ship. I'm going to preserve your life. When they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship by throwing the rest of the grain into the sea. God's going to provide. We're not going to need it. When daylight came, they did not recognize the land, but they saw a bay with a sandy beach where they decided to run the ship aground. If they could, cutting loose the anchors, they left them in the sea. They, just, they didn't just drop anchor. They <laughs> plopped anchor. They got rid of them. They left them in the sea. At the same time, they untied the ropes that held the rudders. They hoisted the foresail to the wind and made for the beach. Let's, let's, let's beach this thing. Let's get out of here and see, you know, see what we're going to do next. But the ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. The bow stuck fast and wouldn't move, and the stern was broken to pieces by the pounding of the surf. Now this ship is falling apart. Some of these guys, you don't read it in the Word, but some of these guys have got to be saying, wait, this isn't didn't this guy not a few minutes ago tell us none of us were going to die, but here we are? The soldiers plan to kill, verse 42, the soldiers plan to kill the prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming away and escaping. Again, this is a poser here. Uh, they were charged with delivering them to Rome for whatever that's going to happen in, in Paul's case, to have his case heard before Caesar. Uh, but uh, if they're going to get away, we're going to kill them. Mm -mm. But the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life. God is going to use incredibly unusual methods to do his will, to work his will in our lives. I... Uh, have appreciated so much the prayers of all of you for our family during this time. Uh, for what I'm personally going through with the cancer, yeah, but also again, you know, at our, my, my age, I don't want to say, my wife's not as old as I am. We were high school sweethearts. I didn't marry a child, but she's, she's a couple years behind me at me. So um, here we are at this age, raising, an, uh, by, depending on when you watch this program, a one-year-old or an almost one-year-old uh, granddaughter. Uh, he's using it. He's using all of these situations, all these circumstances. He's growing me, I know. My wife's always been a tremendous woman of faith. But I think he's using these things to grow me and my faith. And that his promise is real says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it wasn't so, I'd have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. I'm never going to leave you, Jesus said, regardless of the situation, the circumstance. And sometimes he's going to use unusual people. Yes, they're introduced into our lives. Unusual situations. Yes, they're introduced into our lives in order to work his will and his way in our lives. In this case, a Roman centurion who should have cared less. Paul's life should have meant anything to him. But the word of God says, but the centurion, verse 43 of chapter 27, wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. The word of God tells us that Satan moves about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But I believe that our broken, fallen world into which sin was introduced at Satan's, yes, instigation. But mankind continues to go down that broad way that leads to destruction. I continue to believe that our broken world 
oftentimes in that broken world, God can use people who are not even believers to intercede, working his will and his, his, his promise out for our lives. And I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. I like to leave where I am and go to where I'm going. And I can sometimes be impatient about moving from one to the other. Now, I don't want to speed, but I also, when the light turns green, the vehicles in front of me should proceed. It's not going to get any greener, is my uh, habit of saying, mostly to myself. I hope no one ever hears me say that. But I believe with every fiber of my being that on occasion, the person ahead of me doesn't floor it or even take off slowly into the intersection because God is using them to preserve my life for a potential accident that might have occurred had we have traversed that intersection when I wanted to go through. I believe sometimes he's used traffic jams uh, driving down to see our daughter in the prison facility in which she's incarcerated. For me, it's harrowing. It's been every time. This is her third time in prison, and the other two times were down on the way to Houston, which was awful. You get south of DFW on I-45, and you just take your life in your hands because the speed limit is apparently just a suggestion to many of the motorists traversing that highway. But now where she is as well, whew, driving from Wichita through Fort Worth and down to Waco, I prefer to take the more scenic route of 281, but it takes forever to do it sometimes. So, uh, you know, but I believe sometimes he uses impedance, you know, the traffic jam itself to keep my life, to spare my life, because had I been able to go at my own pace, at my timetable, I might have been involved in a wreck where my life would have been taken prematurely. They wanted to kill them all, but the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. You don't know the ways, the methodologies, I don't know, that God is using and working behind the scenes to effect, to make sure his plan for our lives is achieved. And sometimes it can come in the form of someone who clearly does not have our best interests at heart. This centurion is a guard. He's not Paul's confidant. He's not there to, uh, uh, to make sure he has his bath run at a good temperature. None of these things. He's charged with keeping him as a prisoner. But God has used Paul, I believe, so impactfully in his life. He's seen the way God's used him. He's seen the way that God has spoken through him. He's changing that guard's heart about his prisoner. The same thing can happen in our lives. I've seen it happen where someone was so antagonistic to me. Oh, oh my. I've encountered every kind of individual in my treatment for cancer. Some of them saints, in my humble opinion. And some of them are not happy, I don't think, with their lives. And sometimes you feel that as the inpatient. But I've also seen their minds, their hearts, their attitudes towards me change. And it's nothing I've done. There's a great old song that says, let others see Jesus in you. Let others see Jesus in you. Keep telling the story. Be faithful and true. Let others see Jesus in you. I pray that sometimes those folks who have been kind of mean-spirited have seen Christ in me, and it softened them towards me. He ordered those, this is the centurion, who could swim to jump overboard first and to go to land. The rest were to get there on planks or on pieces of the ship. 
And any time I read this passage, I'm not recommending that you watch this movie, but I can't help but think about Titanic and the way it's portrayed that uh, the heroine of the film, you have to close your eyes during parts of Titanic or just watch it on television when they don't show the bad parts. But the heroine of the film is clinging, I believe, to a door, a piece of a door. And the hero of the film, as it were, uh, eventually uh, succumbs to uh, to frost, uh, you know, to the uh, freezing temperature of the the awful water in which they find themselves floating now after the sinking of the ship. She's clinging to a plank or a, a door, as it were. Well, the word says the rest were able to get there on planks or on pieces of the ship. And listen to this. In this way, everyone reached land in safety. Now, you and I don't have time to go through chapter 28, but I pray that you'll read it because this is not the end of Paul's adventures. God is going to take him through some harrowing experiences. Uh, I mean, a shipwreck. Uh, beatings, uh, imprisonment, uh, you know, all kinds of things. But God is going to take him through them, and God's going to be with him. Just we talked, just like we talked about a minute ago. He's never going to leave us. He's never going to leave us. As we're headed, again, depending on when you're watching the program. But if you're in that Thanksgiving part of the year, please be thankful. Please be thankful for the fact that he promises he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. Please be thankful for whatever provision he's given. Because in all sincerity, so many others around this globe do not have one iota, one smidgen of what we literally oftentimes throw away. Please be thankful. And in your thanks... Be grateful, and in your gratefulness, be generous. Because I believe that that's what God would call all of us to be, especially during this time of the year. Well, thanks for being with us. We'll continue our study in God's Word next week as we begin an entire new study. We're going to be back in the Old Testament. And in the month of December and in the quarter that follows, we'll be in the Old Testament. I know you'll find that to be a rich study. I hope you'll join us. Again, you can write to us at the address you see on the screen, the Word of Truth, 1200 9th Street, Wichita Falls, Texas. The zip code is 76301. We would love to get some Christmas cards from you. You can also call us Monday through, Friday, uh, Monday through Thursday, 830 to 5, Friday mornings at 723. 2764. We would love to hear from you. Let us know how we can pray for you. Let us know that you're praying for us. Tell us that you're watching the program. I look forward to seeing you again next week here on The Word of Truth. Happy Thanksgiving. You've been watching The Word of Truth from First Baptist Church, Wichita Falls. Join us again next week for The Word of Truth. 